hello everybody. Um, I, I trust that you're all well. Um, I know that you've all been working incredibly hard uh, in relation to the assessments that you've complete, been completing for us uh, in the build up to the teacher assess grades. This little video instalment will ultimately just run you through exactly how we plan on using that evidence, uh, what evidence we will use uh, in ensuring the best possible outcomes for you all in your courses uh, that you will be completing this year. So um, I'll, I'll get straight on with it ultimately. Now in terms of the, uh, the timeline for where we are, uh, we've conducted our uh, bulk of assessments in terms of, of the exam based ones um, and we're approaching that second window of the exam board materials that have been released uh, on, on the exam board websites uh, in which you'll be doing those within lessons uh, mostly. Um, we have uh, made a slight amendment to a couple of courses and emails and timetables have gone to you today uh, where we've just moved those assessments from that second week back to um, a third week ultimately to give you a bit more time to prepare for them and staff time to prepare for them in lessons with you as well. So they're not additional ones, they are, are just moved back a week. So here we are ultimately, we're at this point approaching the start of May, right towards the end of April. Now, as I say, the next uh, two, three weeks, two and a half weeks, um, we'll be completing further assessments to gather as much evidence as we possibly can in those lessons. From that point onwards, we'll then start using those, uh, as well as all your other assessments that you've done, any records of anything that you have, coursework, all of those kind of things, but I'll explain that in a little while to you. So this is the uh, timeline from the JCQ, ultimately in the run up to the 18th of June, which is the final deadline for those grade submissions to the exam boards. So how will we use that evidence to determine your grade ultimately? Well, like the guidance said initially, um, and, and the further evidence that can be found on the website as well in terms of the parent and student guidance from the JCQ, your grade will be determined by a holistic review of all assessments conducted across the two years of the course. Now what does that mean? The holistic view means that every piece of evidence that we have for you um, that fits with the criteria that we've been given can be used to base a judgement and the fairest judgement on your outcome um, at the end of the course. As you're aware, you are only assessed on what you have been taught um, in terms of the specific content. Um, so anything that could not be taught cannot be assessed and it would be unfair to do so. Um, so all staff have been made aware of that, um, so you won't be assessed on things that you have not been taught or not been able to be taught. I do need to make it clear to you though that content covered during lockdown has been taught so it can be assessed however staff have been made aware that where that is the case we should be taking that into account because we would expect potentially that if um, things have been taught while you weren't in school then your understanding of them may not be as good as if they were in school when you were taught. All of your grades will be agreed by a minimum two staff members so that is your teacher, the curriculum leader for that subject, as well as the SLT link in, in that respect. So for the most part, and the majority of subjects, there will be three staff that have looked at that evidence and agreed on your grade. Now that grade um, is determined with a complete removal of bias. So staff have been trained already in the process, the policies and what we expect those to be following. So um, in terms of attendance, attendance will not be taken into account. So if you have not attended lessons, then that cannot be taken into account when determining your grade. It will be based on the evidence that we have for you. Behaviour will not be taken into account. So if previously you've um, not necessarily been as, as behaved as we would like you to, that will not be taken into account. We cannot judge your grade based on your behaviour. It is purely upon the evidence that we have for you to determine your grade. Some of you have special circumstances that we are aware of. If any of you have not made us aware of these special circumstances, then please do so, because we will be completing a form for these last three bullet points. Anyone that has been um, isolating for a significant period of time, we're aware of that and we will be uh, completing a form 
uh, that that will state ultimately uh, when what time you've missed um, and what evidence we have for you in that aspect. And obviously, any of you that um, require access arrangements for any examinations, the full exams, uh, they have been provided. Whereas uh, in some lessons where that may not have been possible, we're also going to complete a form to suggest that that is the case. Um, and staff have also been made aware of that as well. So, in terms of the use of the evidence, um, there's a couple of slides on this and a couple of things that I need to clarify for you. All curriculum leaders and SLT members have um, strict guidelines to follow from the JCQ and the example of that is shown on the right hand side of this screen where there is a specific checklist so every subject will not be submitted until they have met all of these standards and can evidence that. They range from things like the grades have been determined using evidence that is detailed on our assessment logs, um, that the evidence has been authenticated as your work, etc. The grades for previous cohorts have been analysed, um, which I am doing as part of my role, um, and that they have been signed off by uh, multiple staff. Um, and there's an accurate representation of those uh, department level, the teaching team have consider, uh, considered the various sources of potential evidence against the criteria, lots and lots and lots of things that they need to take into account before we will submit those grades. We've written our policy which is now uh, on our website accompanying this video so please do have a read of that. Uh, more information is in it about the assessments, um, this is kind of a whistle stop tour of it. Um, but we will be asking students to complete a declaration form so that ultimately you, you'll sign it to say that you understand the process from this training, you understand how we will use your evidence and also the fact that it is your work and, and, and it, it is clear representation of your grade. There's a further guidance document, the parent and student guidance that is on our website as well where it will give you further examples of how this would work in terms of previous assessments being at this grade, marks on the exam board materials being at this out of this etc, the grade descriptors for the subjects have been used and this is the grade that have been determined. In terms of how staff will use that, these are all of the possible evidence uh, bases that we can draw upon in order to, um, to formulate that grade ultimately. So the subject specific grade descriptors, as I've already said, in every subject for every level of qualification for A level and GCSE have had a set of grade descriptors added to the JCQ website. Now what that means, it says for a grade eight, this person needs to show and demonstrate these things. For a grade nine, they need to demonstrate all of them and more. For a grade seven, they need to demonstrate some of them in that respect. In terms of uh, coursework, students' uh, coursework, whether it is complete or not, will be taken into account and it will be marked in, in, in relation to exactly the criteria uh, for each piece of coursework and each coursework component. Um, so even if it's not quite finished, if there's a section that's still left, we can still use everything that you have already done. Your mock exams from previous, as well as your trial examinations, uh, that you've recently completed, uh, those will be used as, as evidence, but not the only evidence. So whatever grade you have got on the most recent ones will not be your ultimate grade. We will look at everything as a whole across the previous two years. In the next window, uh, beginning next week, the additional assessment materials released by the exam boards will be using those. Uh, and those will be taking place in lessons and a few in the theatre for certain subjects where there's a large group of students within that. Any end of topic tests that have taken place uh, throughout the course and where you have completed those, where there's specific grade boundaries with those, they will be used. Where not, we would tend to use the grade or a general grade for them based on the mark that you have obtained in those. Any other classroom assessments that have taken place and we have evidence of will also be used. And for the physical subjects and skills based ones, any records of performance. 
so videos of activities in sport, recordings of musical pieces, recordings of performances in performing arts, etc., sketchbooks for art, all of those things will be taken into account as well. Now, every subject has already been asked to complete this evidence log form that you can see on the screen. What that means is every piece of evidence that we have will be recorded for every student for every subject. The mark or the grade or a combination of the two will be recorded as well as any additional comments that the member of staff feels is important. That form will then be used and reviewed um, when we are ultimately moderating and, and deciding on that grade outcome for you. But be rest assured, every student won't have exactly the same evidence, as some students will have been absent at times, and if that's, uh, a number of students were absent for a particular assessment, it will be unfair to discount that assessment for other students. So there may be some variation in the evidence for separate students, but for the most part, they will major the majority of those will be the same. Now, in, in summary, ultimately, this form is what we will be submitting to the exam boards if samples are called. This form will be submitted along with all possible evidence that we have physical copies of so that they can be reviewed should we be sampled um, and this is the one that is ultimately the sign off and this is the completion and whatever grade goes on here and is agreed is ultimately the grade that is going to be awarded. Now you can ask your curriculum leaders if you want to what kinds of topic tests you've done, what evidence that, um, that will be used for individual subjects but obviously we cannot discuss the exact outcomes of those assessments with you anymore or potential outcome for you overall for the course. In summary then for you as to kind of what we'll do moving forward, once those grades have been submitted we'll spend two weeks moderating them and what I mean by that, every grade for every student will be looked at we're not going to pick a sample like the exam boards will, we are going to look at every possible one. And the reason we're looking at every possible one is for both reasons that you can probably imagine. We're checking for if that grade is too high in line with evidence or that grade is too low in line with evidence. For the most part they will be 100% accurate and I'll be more than happy with them. But there may be some that we do need to check upon. So what we will do, we'll conduct our own internal moderation we'll look at uh, how they compare against previous years as you can see from the bottom graph in terms of our grade distributions and we will also look at them in terms of how it is compared for students across the years through all of the assessment that we've done since the beginning of year 12 or year 10. That will highlight to us if there's a spike in a grade like this one or whether there's a dip in a grade. So the blue line I would be challenging in the sense of the grade submitted at the end doesn't reflect what has happened for the previous two years and that, examine, uh, that evidence will be examined further. The grey line is significantly higher than the previous predictions as well as the trial exam results so I'll be looking at that in terms of this is coming out higher than would be expected. The orange line is relatively flat across the way so realistically that will be not looked at any further. Now where this spike appears if there is evidence to support that grade based on that evidence log that's fine and that grade will be permitted. If there is not evidence we will ask the departments to review that grade again not saying no that's not what it is. We will simply be asking them to have another review of the evidence. On top of that we're also conducting external moderation with some of our partner schools within the trust and other schools that um, we have relationships with. So in external moderation will take place between Amington and Derby, our Lando Forte uh, partners uh, for GCSE subjects and with uh, Landau Forte Derby and another Derby school, Woodlands, 
um, for A level and level 3 subjects. The reason for that, we will uh, share anonymised assessments as well as the evidence logs where they will be reviewed and agreed upon in terms of we, we're checking uh, externally that, that we, we're getting it right. It will also be a review of the marking of some of those assessments to ensure that they are fair and accurate and they are not too high or too low. So um, that is the purpose of our moderation process. And finally then, to summarise, any questions that you have about the grading process, procedures that we are following or policies, then please direct those to myself. If you have any specific questions relating to subjects, then speak to the curriculum leaders of that subject area. Important dates for you. The deadline for grade submission is Wednesday the 18th. We cannot discuss any grading until the dates that you can now see on your screen. The 10th of August is the date of release for A level and level 3 vocational course results for six form students and the 12th of August for our GCSE and Level 2 qualifications for QEM students. On that day you will find out your results and obviously from that point you'll be able to then contact your next providers in terms of universities, uh, sixth form etc um, to uh, arrange your places there next year. In terms of appeals, the appeals process begins on that day as well. Now, the appeals guidance is uh, not fully finalised yet, so we, we don't have our policy written. As soon as that is finalised, the policy for the appeals process will also be loaded to this area of the website. That will have information about how you can appeal, why you can appeal, and what it is that means that you can appeal, uh, as well as how to prioritise appeals. So if a university place is hinging on it, then it is prioritised uh, before others, in, in which case we would contact the exam boards earlier. So, as I say, uh, good luck over the next couple of weeks in, in your final suite of assessments that you'll be conducting within class, etc. Um, and, and make the most of it, because that is your final opportunity to prove to us what grade that we should be awarding you by the 18th of June. Any questions, obviously ask away um, and good luck.